So I have these glasses and I really wanted to wear them for this review, but I feel like all we're seeing is glare. So we might have to forego these for now. And we'll just work with this. Hey guys, it's Brie coming to you with the Bee Face. And today we have another ready to love review. This is season six, episode eight, and it is called Operation Meet the Homie. So this is the best friend date um, where the men introduce the women to their best friends. So um, we open up on the gentleman's lounge and Tommy is giving them the business. He called uh, Paul out and told him his shirt was wrinkled. Um, but yeah, that, that was it for the gentleman's lounge. And so the first date is Paul and his friend, Chill Bill. First of all, I'm trying to figure out why all, all of Paul's friends have to have nicknames. I don't understand why this is your whole circle. Just go by your name. Your name is short enough that it doesn't need a nickname. It's just like you're Paul instead of P.O. You're Bill, not Chill Bill, but you know what? If you like it. Um, so in Paul's confessional, he mentions that he wanted Tina on this date and that's his strongest connection, but apparently Tina has been dodging him a little bit and he said she's been evasive. Um, so she's not on this date. Coincidentally, she's on someone else's date later on. Maybe that contract was like, listen, you can avoid only but so much. You are gonna be in this episode this week. <laughs> um... Dakia shows up and I, I'm curious about that because I'm like, where did that connection come from? That feels like it was out of the blue. I, I don't even see them together. Like it doesn't even seem like they would be a fit. However, to Dakia's credit, she comes in a room with good energy and, and I feel like she's always going to be pleasant, right? And so she came into this meet up with Paul and his friend. She gives the friend a hug and she's being energetic and asking questions and being engaged. Oh, and then Carmen walks in. One thing I will say about Carmen, the girl knows how to make an entrance and them biddies were sitting. I said, ma'am, because those girls were sitting. I was like, okay, girl, you... <laughs> If you got it, get it. But <laughs> she doesn't know how to make an entrance. So she comes in, her job out swept the floor because of seeing Dakia. And I think that threw her whole energy off because she came in just kind of dull and disinterested um, and a little just, well, she was definitely throwing jabs at, uh, at Dakia. Um, but she made this weird comment like, Oh, I don't know P.L. He is Paul, henceforth and forevermore, apparently. <laughs> um, but listen, Dakia had all the smoke for Carmen in her confessional because she was like, I don't understand why you're competing with me. You should be choosing the man that's best for you instead of the one that's easiest to get. I said, okay. Oof. Oh, ma'am. She, she read, read Carmen's whole existence on this show. I said, okay, now. Oof, I can't wait for the reunion because I know those two are going to be going at it. I, I just absolutely know it and I'm excited. Um, <laughs> by the end of the date, Paul said Carmen seemed a little superficial. I concur. Um, and Chill Bill's opinion is that Dakia is for Paul, but Carmen is for P.O. And it's like, who are you trying to roll with? Who are you trying to be? Are you trying to be P.O. Gigolo? the whole time or are you trying to be Paul the new person who is I don't know they never really explained who Paul is now versus who he was as P.O. I don't know seems like he's still trying to hold on to a little bit of that anyway um then we get to Tori so Tori brings his friend Ash <laughs> which is very funny because you gotta tell your friends where you're going <laughs> right? You have to like, okay, don't say the N word too much. Like we, we in public, we on TV, we can't, we can't do all of that. But he, Ash said, I'm gonna be who I am. Okay. And that's it. I was like, all right now, period. Um, Sabrina shows up and I'm honestly still surprised that there's still a thing. I don't understand what it's going to take for Tori to be like, I'm tired of waiting for you to make this decision like I've been made this decision and you keep adding people <laughs> but 
but she comes in and she gives Tori a gift and and he seems to really appreciate it which was really sweet it seemed like it was a thoughtful gift apparently Ace was also supposed to be on this date and she didn't show up and and didn't call him and so Tori sitting right there was like ah, I'm a caller and one thing I will say about Tori sir learn to take a hint oh my goodness that was the most awkward <laughs> It was the most awkward interaction because he's sitting there on the phone. Sabrina is like trying to tell him, please step away and do this and don't don't sit on the phone right in front of me. She's like, oh, I've never had a date call another woman while I'm sitting here. Oh, this is awkward. He's just sitting there still like he's just, oh, y'all are having a conversation. Cool. Like he he does not get it. <laughs> which was hilarious to see like stand up go outside and see if she'll pick up the phone oh that man oh that man well-meaning though he is oh goodness gracious take the hint <laughs> but anyway um Tori at the end of that day so Sabrina's given all the good answers and and Ash thinks that they look good together blah 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 interesting thing that Tori said he said when he pulls back Sabrina pulls up which is telling because it's either a strategy so she has multiple connections and doesn't get eliminated or she likes a little bit of that chase like maybe I, I feel like there are some people who like to feel like they have to work for it a little bit. Like they don't necessarily want someone who's just all about them always without anything from them. I, I, I don't know because it's a similar thing that happened with Demetrius because Demetrius has has like from from the beginning to the pool party didn't really show up for Sabrina and he was in her top. How did this happen? He told her one time I'm interested and all of a sudden she's he's her top connection. What? So I think maybe that's a little bit of a pattern of how when men pull back she's like "Ooh, tell me more. Maybe she just really likes that mystery. I don't know. It is interesting. I'm curious if Ace didn't show up because of Laverne. I'm wondering if, so I thought if Laverne was going to go home, it was because she wasn't very interested in Laverne and she would have chosen Tori. But apparently that is not the case. Laverne went home and Ace didn't show up to a date. So I'm curious, like, was that for real like that connection was that deep where you so anyway the next date is demetrius and his friend ken everybody on that date was matching they all had the maroon and red and black going on so like did y'all coordinate <laughs> So this is where the submissive comment comes in. So Ken is coming in with the questions, questions, questions. And Sabrina is batting them, right? I feel like if you're a secure person and who you are, then you don't have problems answering questions in this manner. Even if it seems like, oh, you, you coming down, like you're asking hard questions. If I'm secure in who I am, then I'm just going to answer honestly. And I don't have to worry about anything. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. I can see that about Sabrina. Sabrina then asked the friend, what kind of what kind of girl does Demetrius need in his life or, or wants want in his life? Ken said, submissive. Sabrina said, immediately no. Immediately no. I've seen all I needed to see. Immediately no. Immediately. <laughs> it's like that, y'all know that that um, TikTok that was like, oh, you do not have to worry about me. You do not have to worry about me. Sabrina said, submissive where? Oh, goodness. And I said, like, the word submissive is such a buzzword for a lot of women. 
And I think a lot of that is because kind of what she was talking about in her confessional. I'm really independent. I haven't had to depend on anybody for anything. And so now you want me to just let you lead and I just follow. I get it. However, one thing that she said in her confessional was a little weird to me because she said, I'm a strong person and Demetrius is a strong person. So this is going to be a problem. What did your marriage look like? I'm so confused. Like what did, did your husband just always bend to what you wanted? I, I don't understand how that dynamic would have worked. I'm a little confused about that. I just, I don't get it, but who knows, who knows? So then we get to my favorite person in this process, Clifton. <laughs> Clifton and Tori are kind of my favorite in this process. So we get to Clifton's friend and that's Kenny. <clears throat> Joy comes in. The way Joy hugged Clifton, she looked like she was kind of waiting for a kiss, but it didn't happen. <sighs> there, she seems very into him. And I'm curious if he's sold for real or if he really is still figuring it out and in this process. Dakia comes in. <clears throat> Oh, the energy is so different than her and Carmen. And it just makes me happy because they come in, they're very nice to each other, hugging each other, just making little jokes, you know, to the side. It's not a competitive vibe. And maybe because Joy is like, I got this in the bag. But at the very least, if you're confident in yourself, you don't have to be shaded to someone else. You don't have to come out and try to make someone look worse or or just say little comments that make it seem like, well, when the top dog is here, there's no competition. And you know, y'all could explore this connection or not. Blah, blah, blah. It just, <laughs> the energy was just so different. And it didn't seem like Clifton would be for the drama anyway, but I very much enjoyed Joy and Dakia's interaction and their energy on this date hear a lot of super deep questions but I mean Kenny seems to think Joy is a better fit for Clifton. Clifton expressed a concern that Dakia might be the type of person to be like okay calm down but Joy is more like let's roll with it you know like just because of his personality is so big and her personality is so big that she wouldn't try to tame him so to speak she would just kind of encourage him to be who he is which is I, understandable he expressed concerns before that Dakia was a little nine to five ish I mean she's a little she does seem very put together and structured but she also seems very energetic and and fun so you know who knows maybe that's just something you'd have to see in action right then we get to Donovan's friend, Phil. I'm gonna be honest, I was excited to see Phil. And when they filled his little uh, walk-in and he winked to the side, I said, Phil, don't come in here doing that. Do not. Like circle back, circle back for next season. Cause word on the street is him and Sydney are no longer together. <laughs> but I was said, okay, wink. Okay, okay, sweater. Okay. Sir, Phil is fine. <laughs> so Donovan has Phil meeting Tina and Sabrina. Sabrina and Donovan seem like they just fit well together. I can actually see them in real life. Tina came in a little, not dull, but just less energetic than you would expect one to be in that group setting. Um, one thing I did notice about this whole scene at the dinner table is that it was very chopped and screwed. And I mean that in the sense that like, you would hear the voices, but like the people's mouths weren't moving or it was just like, conversation was moving around. And it's like, I, I imagine there was a segue into that, that like you didn't just jump from that into that. And so the editing here made me real, I, I didn't like it because clearly this is not how the conversation went. And there was even a moment where 
They said, Donovan said to Tina, you gonna eat while you still can. And it sounded like Tina snapped at him and was like, I already ate. But their mouths weren't moving at the same time. And this was at the same time that Phil was talking to Sabrina. And so I, it just was so weird how that happened. Like they wanted to make it seem like Tina was being real spicy, but perhaps she wasn't. So I, I can't even, I can't even comment on that because the editing was terrible in that scene. I didn't like that. So into the date, uh, Phil said something about he has seen Donovan at his highs and he's seen Donovan at some of his lowest points and he just admires how he can rise above those low points. Sabrina heard low points and immediately saw a red flag and, and thought perhaps he still has some finding himself to do, which, okay. Donovan mentions in his sidebar, before we even get to Donovan and, and Tina in that confessional, Sabrina calls Donovan Donnie. You don't look like a Donnie to me. I didn't like <laughs> Donnie. <laughs> that just doesn't seem like, that just doesn't seem like he would go by Donnie. This is weird. So anyway, in the confessional, Donovan says he thinks Tina has been disengaged. So uh, even on the friend date, she just wasn't as interactive as he knows her to be. He mentioned to Phil on the date that she has a two-year-old, but which is fine, but he just thinks that perhaps she doesn't have the bandwidth to have a man right now. And in my mind, potentially two other kids. You have two kids. So, I mean, does she have the bandwidth for a two-year-old? And however the heck old your kids are, plus you. And whatever it takes to maintain. So before deliberation, there are two individual dates. So Paul and Dakia go on a date. So on the friend date, they mentioned that they'd actually never been on, they'd never been out on a date. They just had phone conversations. And Dakia said, you know, he's been a mystery up until now. And, and Paul just isn't sure if that's the direction he wants to go. So Paul is talking about the type of woman he <laughs> he wants and just the type of person he is. And he uh, mentioned that he loves corny jokes. That's his sense of humor. And I said, amen to the self-awareness because yes, corny. Oh, goodness gracious. That was the first thing <laughs> we picked up, Paul, is, is yes, you, you do have kind of a corny sense of humor, which is fine. You just got to find someone who, who goes with it. Paul was, so in, in that conversation with Dakia, it's very interesting to hear how Paul interacts because it's almost like he wants to be not even just the leader, but like the teacher in the situation. Because Dakia asked, what type of woman are you looking for? And he was like, well, I don't like to say looking. Okay, what kind of woman do you want? Or what kind of woman do you need? Well, what I want and what I need are two different things. So let me break it down to you. I'm sure you didn't need to do all that. I, I feel like she understood that those were two different items, but I feel like there's room for both in a relationship. So you could have just explained. I I am of the mind that Paul might need a real young thing. He, he might need a young thing who just wants him to be a provider lets him be the leader, but also has intelligence enough to hold a conversation with him, but also step back and let him mentor her and teach her and listen to his corny jokes and laugh at the appropriate times. I just feel like he's not looking for his equal. I am not sure, but that's just the vibe I get from him. I definitely don't see the spark between him and Takiya. I, I don't think that's going to work. The only people I have seen him spark with at all were Precious and Tina. At all. Precious and Tina. Barely even Carmen. I mean, they did have a pickle moment, but I feel like that's more sex oriented than an actual relationship. So then we get to Tori and Ace. So Tori is trying to figure out, he's trying to get some answers. Why did you stand me up on a date? You could have called, you could have told me you weren't coming, you could have explained, and he didn't hear from her. So Ace comes in 
And she just mentioned, you're into Sabrina. And I see how you look at her and that's just not where we are. And Laverne was my connection and I just don't feel that there would be any reason for me to continue this process when my connection has left. And she self eliminates. I will say, cause I called it many episodes back. I said it, it was at the, it was at one of the initial group dates where they went to like, was it like a arcade type place? And she stepped away to the bar to go get a drink and Clifton was like, what's up? And she just said, well, y'all are vibing. I'm, I'm not trying to intrude when you already have your people there. I said, she seems like she would be the type to self eliminate. I called it and I was right. So <laughs> a self eliminated, which I am kind of disappointed because I really think her and Tori could have hit it off. But if Tori really has had tunnel vision on Sabrina, I can imagine it would be hard to get past that and then say, I'm anything other than a second choice because clearly Sabrina didn't choose you, right? We've already had two self eliminations. Goodness gracious, these people. So then we get to deliberation. We're at the gentleman's lounge. So <laughs> the, the thing that made me laugh here, Donovan is describing the outfit that Tina came in with and he said she had on a white cat suit. And what I took away from that is that men don't know what a cat suit is <laughs> because she came in with a blouse and white pants. I don't understand. <laughs> Sir, learn what a cat suit is. Tommy's patting himself on the back because Donovan said that Phil and Sydney are still together. And in my, my mind, I said, Tommy don't get too excited because the streets are talking and they're not saying that they're together. I think that with Ace Gone, Tori is going next. I just feel like if next week it's the women's choice to eliminate, which it sounds like it might be the men's again. Like it might be the men's turn again to eliminate the women. Cause he said, well, it sounds like y'all need another week to determine. I feel like it was just because Ace self eliminated. They were like, yeah, we can't, this is going to cut the season short. So <laughs> he said, yeah, y'all get another week. So I'm wondering if it's the, if, if it's going to be the men's turn again, or if it's back to the women. It could be. It could be back to the women since Ace technically was the the woman to be eliminated. She just did it before they got to tell her. So Tommy mentions that they are going to have a getaway. They do this every season and oh the drama. So <laughs> Demetrius is smelling the drama from 10 miles away and I said you are absolutely correct and this is why we watch. So <laughs> I'm excited to see that. The previews for next week, goodness gracious, that's a nice house. I'm, I'm trying to figure out where they are because I live in the, like, close to the DMV area. I'm like, if I want to take a little vacation and get an Airbnb, whatever that was, I'd just get a whole bunch of people. That seems really nice. The outside of the house was gorgeous. So you see two bags on a bed. We find out that Joy and Clifton are sharing a room, which has hurt Dakia's feelings, which is unfortunate. And then you see the scene with Sabrina and Donovan talking about his process of healing and how long he's been single. This man has only been single for three months. Th three months, sir. Ready to love? Where? You're on this for TV. Bruh. Oh my goodness. Anyway, so Tina hasn't showed up, which is not surprising because multiple people have said she's been evasive lately and Donovan had concerns that she just didn't have the bandwidth right now. And then in her confessional, she mentioned it is difficult to date this many people at one time. I can imagine. And you got a baby baby at home. So that was it for, for this episode. I'm excited for next episode and what type of drama pops off because you know when they're in these group settings and everybody is there at the same time, it's gonna be some drama. However, dissimilar to last season, this cast is a little bit older, just in age. So I'm not even saying maturity level, just older. Whereas last season, it was a lot of the 30s. And that's where a lot of the cattiness and the drama and the conspiracies showed up, where it seems like that probably wouldn't happen here. And that some of the drama would be 
more within their own relationships and, and people determining, okay, this connection isn't as strong as I thought, or I thought I was really in the running here and this person has clearly made their choice, i.e. Clifton vis-a-vis -vis Joy and Dakia. I definitely don't think we're gonna see as much drama as we did last season with Miss What's Her Face and her, I'll F y'all up. I don't feel like we're gonna see much of that. So that's good, but drama, yes, certainly. Um, but that is it for this review. Do y'all watch Put A Ring On It? Because I did not know it was back on. And so I'm excited and I feel like I might try to do a review on it right after this. So we will see. We will see if there's enough in there for me to get some good nuggets because, oh, seasons one and two, I was all over. I love that show. Um, Field Mob made me so mad though last season. I was like, how are you gonna do that to that girl? Cause Alex is so sweet. Oh my goodness. But that is it for this review. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.